people ask us all the time, how often do we need to go into our hives? Like how much work is this gonna be to raise bees? Well, it depends. If you wanna be a really good beekeeper, then you need to go into your hives pretty often. If you just wanna be a bee haver, somebody that has bees in their yard, you don't have to check them that often. But today we're gonna to show you why you need to be checking them on a regular basis. We've been keeping bees for over nine years. We have five different apiaries and about 50 hives on average per year that we manage. We love to teach beekeeping classes and we especially love to help people in the East Texas area figure out how to be the best beekeepers they can be. So we're in the bee yard today and we tell our beekeepers that take our class and that come to bee meetings um, that you can tell a lot about your hive just from looking at the outside of it. Um, so we tell everybody that you can stand outside your hive and kind of assess your colony and this is what we're talking about. So here is one hive, okay? And here is another. You can tell a pretty big difference. Plus, when we look down and we see those are dead bees and they are not from the fall. So we know something's going on and we know that we need to check out this hive and go inside. Okay, so we looked at all of our hives. They all have a lot of activity. This one has the least amount of activity. So we're concerned uh, just about what's going on in the hive. So we wanna check it um, and just see what's going on. See if we need to address anything. So right off the bat, you can see there's not very many bees. So, you know, it's in a two hive, a two box hive. So uh, there's a concern there, like they obviously don't need as much space as they have. You take out a frame, there's honey there. Um, a lot of these other frames, yeah, I can see. Um, a lot of these top frames have honey. There's nectar. There's some activity. Most of the activity is in the bottom box, so I'm going to take off this top box, see what's going on down downstairs, so to speak. Okay, so we've taken the top box off. Uh, not a lot of activity. There is honey there. Um, but when we come down here, this is what a hive looks like that is frozen okay so we had cold weather um, there was honey in it but there was a separation of comb between where the brood was and where the honey was and you have to remember that when that occurs and it gets freezing the bees can't leave the brood or they can't leave the, the cluster, I should say, because they are, um, because it's so cold. So a lot of times you can have honey in a hive and they'll still freeze. There are some bees that are alive, but most of them are dead. This is a cluster of dead bees right there. You can see the live one coming over, but there's just a cluster of dead bees and you can see all the bee butts. Because they'll get in the, the cells to try and get as close to each other as possible and generate heat that way. And most of them, here's another frame, but the same thing. Um, there's pollen around the outside. Um, not a lot of honey or nectar down here. They probably consumed all they had on these frames and then uh, that was it. Um, if you look down here, you can see the mass of bees and this is this is what's heartbreaking for uh, a beekeeper I'll try to lift it up and if you see down at the bottom down there can you see that oh yeah in fact you can take the box off and show us so that's what happened I mean that was a sizable colony that wasn't well it wasn't it wasn't, wasn't enough, huge but it wasn't enough to keep them yeah to generate enough heat in yep. the conditions and I had a, an entrance reducer an entrance reducer and a solid bottom board yeah. 
So sometimes you're gonna lose a hive. So, you know, the, we can do everything. Obviously, they didn't have enough reserves, um, groceries, basically. Well, they didn't have them in the right place. They didn't mm -hmm. have them next to where their cluster was. Because in that one box, I mean, it's it's got a little bit of weight. It's probably 15 pounds of nectar, and there's, I mean, there's some in there. So all these bees, you think they're robbing? Um, no, I mean, we didn't see robbing activity. I think these are just a couple of the leftover bees. So what but do you? They may be robbing. So at this point, there's no queen, so there's no hope for this. There is hope. There's always hope. <laughs> well, there's hope for the comb. There's... Comb is, again, one of your most valuable resources. So Correct. So at this point, we're in cleanup mode, and we're in save the comb mode, right? Yes. So... Because, like we just talked about in a previous video, um, we're going to do splits. So when you take that frame and put it into a hive mm -hmm. you've jump started their expansion as a hive right? right because now they don't have to spend all their time drawing out that frame they can start the queen can start laying in it immediately correct yeah they're gonna have to do some cleanup get some of these bees out here i i, I typically just put it on a hive and let them clean it up it's a little bit of a a pain to pull all the bees out and they'll they'll, they'll clean it up but yeah, so that's the plan for this now is to combine these boxes, um, clean up all the bees, and then put them on other boxes. So we've got some single boxes over there. We'll take a look at those, see if those need another box, and we'll, we'll put these on top, and then they'll have room to expand if they need it. Awesome. So bad news for the beekeeper, but we're going to save the resources, like... If, again, so when we talk about how often do you need to be in your hive, let me tell you, this hive right here, very susceptible to wax moths. And you can already see, we're starting to give, um, I think those are hive beetles. Can you bring it closer? Starting to get hive beetle larva in there okay. already. And I'm not seeing it, hold on, oh wait. Oh, yeah, 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 right there. See it on the... And so, again, a healthy hive can fight those off, but a weaker hive is very susceptible. And so, um, if we didn't catch this right now, we would have probably lost the wax to wax moths because the hive was compromised. So, so very interesting. Thank you for tuning in to our little sad video of losing a hive, but this should show you that you need to be checking your hives rather regularly. We... Okay, so just two things. We're not out of the woods yet. You still want to be monitoring your hives, making sure that they have resources. Um, we got through a lot of hives today. Some had tons of honey and nectar. Some, you know, needed to be fed. So that's what I've been doing today is going around feeding. Uh, we're supposed to get some freezes uh, this week. Um, the second thing is, again, this shows the importance of having multiple hives. You know, if you had two or just one hive and there wasn't any activity, you wouldn't necessarily know if anything's wrong. Um, but when you have two hives, you can see, like we can see in this yard, we have hives that have a lot of activity, and then this one didn't have any. So it kind of leads you to go and check on those ones that have low activity, because you want hives that have maximum number of occupants, really big hives with a lot of bees in it. And so when you have something that has less activity, it's easy, easy to tell if you have multiple hives. So yes, that's a good point too. Like we should be checking our bees, but you don't have to break open every hive to check them. You can literally do a walk through your yard, um, especially if you stay rather calm and you stay a couple feet away and you can assess just looking at the landing board and the entrance um, and see how your hive is doing. So, and then that would be the indicator that we do need to go in and crack it open and check it. But we do encourage new beekeepers to be checking them regularly. The more often you're in there, the more you're going to see, the more you're going to learn, the more you're going to understand. So anything else? 
That's it. All right. Please subscribe to our channel, like our video, um, and share our videos with any of your other beekeeper friends. You know, we just want to help East Texas beekeepers to know what's going on now and to know what they should be doing in their bee yard. So happy beekeeping.